Hey everyone, in this video I want to explore the right way to think about messaging to the organization when we want to do a cost optimization drive. A lot of companies are focused on this in the cloud and you see it done well, you see it done not so well. So I wanted to talk about some of the ways I've seen it maybe not go so well and some maybe different approaches to consider. Now when I used to teach martial arts, you would sometimes do negative demonstration. So if I was to think negative demonstration, the worst way I can think about doing this is just as a message. And it is reduce cloud cost 10%. Just this uniform message out there. Everyone, every business unit, every app, go and cut your cost 10%. And that success metric you've defined, remember your success metric is 10%, you may well be successful. You'll reduce cost 10%. But the challenge is what's happened behind the scenes is you've probably now compromised your reliability. You may have compromised your security. You may have impacted your operational excellence, your performance efficiency. There's a bunch of other things now that most likely, yes, your one success metric you defined, cost and 10%, hey, great, we hit that. But what you're not seeing immediately, but you're gonna see it, is you've compromised these other areas. And so what's happening? What, what, is, what is occurring in this? And I always think about this idea that in consulting, there was this logic that, hey, if, if anything you wanna do, I can have it done right. I can have it done cheap. I can have it done fast. And always what we would think about is pick two can't have all three. You can't have it done fast and cheap and right. I can have it done fast, but then it's to have it done right, it's not gonna be cheap. Um, I can have it cheap and fast, it's not gonna be right. And so you get the same idea when I think of all the different dimensions of an architecture. And I'm gonna simplify it for now, but just very, very simply, if I think of a, a balancing, a, was it the old seesaw, I could very simplistically, and it is far more complicated than this, I could have cost on one side, and then I could have things like reliability, security, balancing on the other. And if all I do is pay attention to the cost, I'm gonna make this unbalanced. Something's gonna give and people are gonna, gonna fall off. So I can't do that. If I think about the messaging that I'm doing, so let's go and look at what I'm saying. Well, my messaging that I'm really emphasizing within this is reduce cloud cost. So this is my message. That's what people are primarily hearing. And then the success metric, what are we gonna be measured on through the organization, through our business leadership? Well, the success metric is just some number. I have to reduce my cost by 10%. And what people really hear when you say this is reduce cloud cost by 10% no matter what um, or else. Um, at the expense of everything else. Like that's fundamentally becomes what is the entire message that people are hearing and have to react to. And if you're not sure of when I talk about these, this trade-offs you might have in the environment, one of the really good things you can look at, and let's actually open this up super quickly, is there is a well-architected framework. And when I talk about that seesaw, very simplistically, you have these different pillars, and obviously we're talking about cost, but then right, you have reliability, you have security. There's operational and performance efficiency. 
And if you're concerned about well, what might be happening, might, what might tip on the other side, I can go and look at the cost optimization trade-offs and see well, what might happen. What could be some of those negative things that could occur? And by the way, I would actually use this to help me decide what should I be doing? What are some checklists of things that I should be doing to try and optimize the right way? bearing in mind those trade-offs at every single step. So this is something you could provide to your um, applications as part of a good measured initiative that you want to do in the company. And the reason it's, it's such a problem to just have this blanket statement, everyone has to reduce cost by 10%. Imagine for a second, I'm a good application. So I'm a good app. I have done good architecture. I'm using right-sized instances. I'm using auto-scale, where it makes sense. Maybe I'm using spot instances. Um, I delete things when I don't need them. I turn them off, maybe I delete them. I might use savings plan to optimize resources that I know I have a certain cost. I have optimized my environment from the get-go. And then you have a bad app. And bad app didn't care at all. Bad app just went and created a whole bunch of really big stuff because they like big things. And they created 10 because you know what? I like even numbers. I want 10 of them, 10 of these huge things. So then if you give this message, hey, everyone reduce cost by 10%. Bad app is like, oh, 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 I'll delete one. I'm a bit bummed out. Now it's an odd number. Hmm. But they have been successful. They have met the requirement that you needed. But it's still hideous. It's a little bit better, but it's still hideous. Whereas poor old good app, Good app is like, okay, you need to cut 10%. And they're looking at this and they're like, how? How do I cut 10%? I was doing the right thing from the beginning. This blanket message just doesn't make sense. And I always think there was an office episode once where Michael had this goal to lose weight in the branch and everyone had to lose the same amount of weight. And there's poor Angela who's underweight and the doctor said she should gain weight. He was like, well, which limb do I cut off to lose 10 pounds? Kelly, I think, got dehydrated. She stopped drinking to meet it. So the net result was some people just got punished. And this is what will happen here. The good applications will say, well, okay, which arm do I cut off? I guess I'll stop drinking for a few weeks. That's all they can do. And sometimes they'll be, a, well, you don't have to. You can go to an exceptions board and you can justify why you're failing to meet our requirements, which is terrifying no one is going to want to do, and you may as well call it the I don't want to work here anymore board. So people are not going to avoid that. And so when that happens, what the app teams will have to do, because they've got no choice, they've already architected well, and they just want to get this off their plate. And even if someone is not architected well, and they do have spare, they're still going to take the path of least resistance. So what ends up happening is you get very negative things that is not your intention, but ultimately they'll do things like, okay, well, I'll delete some required instances. And by that, I mean, well, maybe I need three instances. So I'm on three availability zones. Well, I'll delete it. Maybe I'll change things now to my auto scale to a minimum to one. A minimum count of one is useless because then if there's a failure, it doesn't matter how many baskets I have, how many availability zones or regions, if there's one egg, it's an, it's an A basket. I have to have at least two or three to be resilient. And um, people will go and do things like disable logging. Well, logging costs money. I'll turn off my telemetry. I can't really get a good insight into what's happening. I can't get good trending anymore. I don't know what optimization will be good anymore, but hey, I've reduced some cost. I'll turn off some security tooling. I'm probably okay. I'm probably not going to be attacked. So I'm going to do things that are easy, but they're very, very detrimental to my overall organization. And that, that's really not what I wanted to do. But 
that's what's going to happen. And for every company that I ever see do this, this type of very blanket initiative, what comes next is they have a ton of reliability problems. So then there'll be a reliability initiative that they'll spend a whole bunch of time on and they'll add things back. So that will, this will then lead to that. And then probably, okay, then there'll be another, you just get this cycle. And then there'll be a security one because there was a security incident. Oh, we're not doing the right security tools. So now we're focused on this, then we'll come. It doesn't make sense. You can't address these in isolation. I have to think of these as a complete architecture. The cost, the reliability, the security, the performance efficiency, the operational excellence, they're intertwined. I cannot do it in isolation. It's not going to work. So what should we do? The right way to approach this, I, I really do have to think about, there's this whole thing of first do no harm. When we do conditional access policy or Azure policy, you audit first. So the first thing we want to be doing is observing. Let's get the right metrics and telemetry. What is the resource utilization of the environments? Are we using savings plans? Um, what are the current Azure advisor? So a really useful thing here is, hey, well, let, let's look at Azure Advisor right from the get-go. And I can use Azure Resource Graph to query these so I could see it for the entire org. Let's get an idea of where we are. And then when we get an idea of maybe where the key areas are, let's help educate the organization. Educate them on WAF. Educate them on the trade-offs and the balance and our company's requirements around reliability, around security. They don't just go and turn off. What is my apps SLA, my SLO, my uh, recovery point objective, my recovery time objective? Keep those in mind as I'm optimizing, don't sacrifice. Hey, we have these requirements for logging, for auditing, don't sacrifice those things. So help educate. And then what we do is we're gonna create a balanced message. And that balanced message is gonna focus on keeping that balanced. We're gonna make sure we have the right guidance within there. As part of education, we can talk about, hey, um, use the WAF, which we talked about. We can help say, hey, go and look at Azure Advisor. As an organization, when we look holistically at everything we have, maybe at an organizational level, we can do things like Azure Savings Plan. We may be able to go and save 10% just by organizationally doing a savings plan for the sum of everything in our enrollment. Doesn't mean we shouldn't do these other things. We wanna save everything we can. We wanna be as efficient as we can, but I can maybe bring multiple things. There might be things the app teams can do, but there might be things that I as an organization can do. And this is a cycle. And then we'll come back, we'll carry on observing. We're gonna observe well, are we seeing an increase in reliability issues? Are we seeing an increase maybe in service tickets being raised? Are we seeing an increase in some security flags? Maybe things have tipped the wrong way. We need to adjust the messaging. Let's get people back into the right frame. And that, that's really an important thing. So when I think of messaging, I wanna think about a message. And I might use, hey, we've been running for a while now. We've learned some great lessons. Let's now take this opportunity to look at what we've done. Let's think about optimizing our environment, making sure we're addressing all of our reliability requirements, our security requirements. What have we learned from other teams? And they could share maybe a monthly meeting with a certain focus area on things we can focus on. So I really think this is a, a key thing that you have to think about. It has to be a very balanced message. You cannot ever as an organization just send out a message for one factor when you care about all of them. People will absolutely do based on what you've told them the success metric will be. That's human behavior. If I give you a metric I'm measuring you on, that's what I'm gonna focus on. So you, you can't do that. And again, it punishes when you have the teams that are doing the right things already. You want to stress a really good efficiency model balancing with all of the other elements. And that, that's really my whole point. 
Um, you don't want this one dimensional cut cost message. You want to be successful through not, hey, I've cut a cost, but I've crippled everything else. And now I'm just going to have a ton of other initiatives that follow and then keep undoing each other. I want to think about how can I make my organization, my total solution better in a balanced way. So that balanced, well thought out communication is just going to be so much better to meet your goals. Now, it's going to be more work than just saying cut 10% but you're gonna end up with your desired result and a quality environment. Because after all, pick two, well, what I want is definitely it done right. It may not be fast, but hey, it doesn't have to cost a fortune. Take the time, do it right. You'll end up with a good solution and a good message. Hope that was useful. As always, till next video, take care.